This is Jennifer Biggs. Welcome to Sound Bites. Chris Harrington and I are in the studio ready to talk Thanksgiving. You can listen to Sound Bites on Thursdays at 11 a.m. on WIXR 91.7 and find us anytime on DailyMemphian.com where you'll also find food stories written by Chris, by me, and by other food writers too. Chris, hey. Hey, Jennifer. Thanksgiving, hey. the greatest holiday. Well, you know, it is in fact time to talk turkey, let's say. And yep. I gotta tell you, Thanksgiving is, if not, I'm, it was always my favorite holiday. And then, I don't know, a few years ago, like 20 years ago, a few, uh, Memorial Day kind of became my favorite holiday because we had... You like summer. I like summer. and yeah, I, I like had, fall. I still like Thanksgiving a lot, but we had two birthdays in the family, both of the people. Their birthday was on the 26th, and we had a pool built 20 years ago. So it was all just so festive on, you know, to come out on Memorial Day and have these birthday parties and, you know, fun in the sun and the pool and all that. So that became a really big deal. But for the most, for most of my life, it's been Thanksgiving. And I think now probably, you know, that's the one that, that means the most, right? Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. Let me count the ways or some of them. Mm -hmm. It is food forward, which we, not only do we like on this podcast, but Mm -hmm. we just like in life, right? It's very food oriented holiday. Um, it's a food oriented holiday that's it's about food and it's about family, it's about gathering, it's about cool weather. It's not about buying presents and exchanging presents, which I don't like. So it's like Christmas minus presents and with better weather. Um, it's more food oriented. I like that it's always a Thursday, which is perfect because it it becomes like a four day weekend thing. It's a holiday that's really it's a four day holiday that starts on a Thursday. And really true it enough. starts the day before because if you're cooking Yeah, you gotta cook. You gotta right? cook, you gotta start cooking the day before. That's so it's true. like a five day thing. So it's big enough to be more than just a one day thing. It becomes an extended weekend, but also it's small enough that I'm speaking from personal experience now. Opinion, you know, experiences vary. For me, there's not as much travel pressure as there is around the Christmas holidays. And so for Thanksgiving, we always stay home. Sometimes we have it at our house. Sometimes we have it at my dad's or my brother's, whatever. But we never leave Memphis. Whereas, thanks, whereas Christmas is a stressful, when are we going to Arkansas? When are we going to Minnesota? When are we going here? And you're just pulled in so many different directions. Thanksgiving is a, you're not, it's a low stress, high food, extended weekend. Love it. The best holiday. Well, Christmas can be, even if you have family in town, it can get to saying, be crazy. Experiences vary. Yeah. The, the last right. part was a personal. No, but no, Christmas is, it, it, by the time you have to be here, you know, we used to have two stops on, uh, right. sometimes three stops on Christmas Eve, then at least two on Christmas Day, and then it was also at my house, right. so outside of that. Yeah, Christmas is a lot easier now, too. Again, because people die. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I hate that all these things Get old is what you're telling yeah, people. Yeah, but you know, at, at some point... Just attrition changes. Uh, it sort of changes everything. We we don't After replace a while, these they come people. To you, That's is right. What you're saying. And you know, and I let me say one thing about that because I thought about excuse me this morning when we were talking about when we uh, when I was thinking about this podcast. So I'm sure that your Thanksgiving is very similar to mine because I bet it's this big potluck thing. Everybody if in the family is making something and everybody gets together and it's all it's all food. Everybody wants the same thing every year. You don't want to vary Thanksgiving too much. You're going to get people upset. Well, guess what? I'm going to be the next generation in charge. I'm going to change it up completely. It's going to be an evening meal. It's going to be a composed meal. I'm going to have exactly what I want. I'm going to make sure everybody likes it. We're going to have a cocktail hour before. We're going to have wine. It's going to be a whole different kind of meal than this iced tea midday thing that we do now. We're somewhere in between what apparently you do and what you want to do. We're probably somewhere in between those two things. Um, we're not totally a everyone brings stuff potluck. It, People who are coming will bring something, but whoever's hosting the Thanksgiving will do 80% of it the way we do it. And so like, you know, maybe the, maybe, you know, my dad will bring a bottle, bring some wine and maybe they'll bring the the rolls and and maybe, you know, my brother will bring one thing, but we're, we will cook. We're doing our house this year. Mm -hmm. Whoever's, whoever's hosting it will do most of the cooking the way we do Thanksgiving. And we, you know. It's not. A, it's not a really iced tea or cocktail. It, it's it's sort of wine oriented in terms of the. We'll do a. We're late. gonna have cocktails and wine when I'm. Well, I'm, I'm pro cocktail. You, you know, you, I'm pro cocktail. That's how it's gonna happen. But we'll, we're we typically do a late afternoon, early evening, 
um, you know, with some, with some wine, but but it will be like whoever is hosting will mostly set the menu and mostly do the preparation with with, with some some small additions from the people coming in. Well, how it, it whoever does it in my house has to do the turkey and dressing. Though we're going to change that this year, and I right. know we're getting ready to talk about that on these essentials. Uh, and my mother always does the ham because my mother makes a really good ham, so right. she will she will do the ham. As far as the side dishes, that's kind of an up in the air thing. It depends. I, you know, I'll do whatever I can, and anybody who wants to bring something will do their thing. So right. let's start on essentials. You have a list of essentials. It's a good well, list. Well, I, I think when you talk about a Thanksgiving meal, if it's at least quasi traditional, right? Mm-hmm. In some, it, it's a, a Thanksgiving meal, not just a meal, right? Some right. people will say like grill steaks or whatever. I don't think either of us, we're flexible, but we, we want Thanksgiving meals, right? Yeah, except when we start having it at nighttime, we're doing beef wellington. <laughs> okay, I'm just well, telling you right even now. Even that's not yeah. an every night thing. That's a special it's occasion true. thing, yes, right? Yes, it is. Right. We want occasion food for yes. Thanksgiving, whether it's hyper traditional or less traditional, mm-hmm. it's occasion food. So I think, you know, you got three, three general components. You have a centerpiece to your meal, more than likely, turkey or not turkey. Then you have things that are essentials that have to be part of what you define as a Thanksgiving meal and things that are a bonus. So maybe let's start with the centerpiece. I, I am I am pretty traditional on this. I am very pro-turkey for Thanksgiving. I know there are a lot of people who are anti-turkey, and I have a six-point you know counterpoint to that. Um, I don't think you're as like righteous about the turkey on Thanksgiving as I am, but you're, you're sort of turkey oriented, right? I, yeah, and I have I have a way of doing the turkey right. that it, it'll be in recipe exchange on Saturday, by the way. And it's you overnight. It's an overnight dry brine, and then you can cook the turkey. It's because you break the turkey down before you dry brine it. Okay. You can cook the turkey in an hour and fifteen minutes. And that interesting. We I, may have to look at this. I, listen, it's fantastic. I'll attach a video of it, somebody else, not me. It, it would be a far uglier video if I were doing it. it she does it great, but it's um, it's a super way to do turkey, and I like that. The best thing about that turkey is that it makes the best gravy in the world. So that's that's one reason to do that turkey is all the vegetables and everything that you roast underneath it turns into gravy too, and it's fabulous. That said, we're not doing turkey this year. Uh oh. But I'm doing chicken, and I'm going to do it. Where I'm making chicken and dressing because you can't do it without dressing. That's that's the thing. That for is on us. the essentials list. Yes. You know, here's a funny thing, and I wonder if this happened to other families. So our last real family Thanksgiving was actually 2000s our big extended family was 2017 when we were all together. Right. In 2018 we had two deaths in our family before Thanksgiving and so a lot of people wouldn't a couple of people didn't even come because they thought they would be depressed and it just you know it was just not a sad it was an unhappy holiday for right. pretty much everybody. In 2019 my mother and I went to Texas and did this Wonderful Thanksgiving at Megan's house, which is when I learned how to do the uh, this turkey hack because I didn't have any idea what I was, you know, I wasn't going to be in my own kitchen. And then, of course, in 2020, nobody did Thanksgiving. Did you? I mean, I don't think we did anything. I No, we did. But I think that was the year we did it outside. So we did it on the deck and had a fire pit and we were all outside, I believe, that Thanksgiving. I don't think we did. I know that... Um, they they were still Megan and the kids were still in um, Texas then, so I know they didn't come home for Thanksgiving, and I don't think I don't think we did anything. And then in, by twenty twenty one, so the the place that we'd always held Thanksgiving, you know, it's a tradition. One is at one house, and one is that everybody has you know the holidays that are theirs. My aunt had sold that house, and it just sort of changed. Her family went out. That part of the family went there. The other part of the family came to my house, and that's what we're doing this year, too. So it's a much smaller gathering. We'll have, you know, like around 10 people instead of around 20 people um, like we did last year. So there's really no need for a turkey and a ham. And I threw up to everybody, which do you want? And everyone said, we got to have the ham, but we have to have the dressing. So chicken and dressing. And ham. So, so, ham, yes. Chicken and dressing so, is just so on the you, side. So you're doing multiple centerpieces. So we we only all only have one, and 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 it, it's pretty. No, much we all, always had turkey and ham. Yeah, always. But again, it was twenty or really probably right. closer to thirty people. Back yeah, in the we old have days. closer to ten as our normal yeah. like Memphis family, and so we don't need that much. And so we always do turkey. And when we've done it at other other houses, when my brother, one of my my older of my two younger brothers, um. 
he's he's very food oriented. They, every all the men in my family are, but he in particular is. And so when he's when we've done it other places, he's done a deep fry turkey one year. He's done a smoked turkey. At our house, we roast the turkey. I like a roasted turkey and better, so, don't you? Yeah, I do. We do. So we do. We brine. Brine your mm-hmm. bird. That's one of my six points in defense of the turkey. You got to brine your bird. I totally agree. If you're not with that. brining it, don't come to me complaining about the turkey. You got to learn how to cook, yeah. cook your turkey. And and eat the dark meat. Come on, people. Oh, it's 100%. always better. 100%. Right. And so we do. So I'm, I'm going to have to look at your dry brine recipe. We typically do a wet, like overnight wet brine. We use sort of the Alton Brown. Mm-hmm. Um, thing, but I like the roast turkey. Not only the traditional aspect of it, but I like that it sort of suffuses the kitchen. The aromas you get throughout the house, Absolutely. which you don't get if you're outside smoking or deep frying. I want the house to smell like the roast turkey. That's so true. Yeah, and it, so, it, really. In that, I mean, just it, that's part of cooking. Honestly, so, is what the house exactly. Smells like. So you get the house smelling like Thanksgiving with the roast mm-hmm. turkey, and then you get the visual of the big brown bird. Which I like, which is part of the aesthetic appeal of Thanksgiving is is the golden brown golden brown bird. You will not get that if you do the over the one I'm okay. talking about. Well, you I mean, have you have to this. you have to cut it down first. But what but while it will allow you, I want to some do, Norman Rockwell like, I get big it. bird at the I end of the table it. stuff. That, that's that is the trade off for being yeah. able to cook a turkey in an hour. But you do get a lot of other a lot of things that can go in your oven either at the same time because this is on one rack. You do get fantastic gravy. And you, um, you know, the oven can be free for other things, too. Well, this is the first Thanksgiving. So we, we did a kitchen renovation, as regular listeners may know, in January. So th- that's one of the reasons we're coming back to our house this year. It'll be the first Thanksgiving in our new kitchen. And it's very nice. I saw it just recently. Thank you. Um, but we've got it. This will be a first Thanksgiving with a new stove we got as part of the renovation. And it's a stove that's a double decker, sort of two. Mm-hmm. And everyone claims, my wife and the manufacturers claim, you can fit a turkey into one of the two. And I'm I'm I'm... I'm I'm not sure. It doesn't look like it's big enough. You know, so my... Because our other oven, like the whole thing was the one container, right. and now it's a two-level. And I don't know that it's big enough, but they say it is. Mine is also a double stove. Right. But the, but the bottom is it's only supposed to be for warming, but it goes to 300 degrees. Right. So you can cook in it if you're wanting to cook. But you know what I use it for? Just like any other stove. Just to keep like the all keep the, your pans the pans and, your, your and all that stuff. Cookie sheets. I mean, I honestly can't tell you the. I mean, if I you if I ever used that thing, it was right when I got it. Uh, but that's foolish. I need to see if I can make use of it. I need to try to to do that. Okay, so turkey or ham? Do you? I mean, some people may do something. I I, I, different. I I I I insist on turkey, but like you know, opinions can vary. But I to me, Thanksgiving means turkey. We do both, as I said. But the main reason. We do. So I will do when I cook the chicken and I may do one chicken. I may do two. I don't know. But I'll make sure that I use the same method that you use for the brine turkey as far as the vegetables and all that so that I can get the same gravy because that gravy is fantastic. Now, if I were to not if I were to go away from the Thanksgiving turkey, I would go to the chicken. That's what I would do. Similar visual quality, similar in terms of the gravy and the whole thing and fit with dressing like. I, I, I'm not going to fight you on the, on, on the chicken. I, I can see that. I could, I mean, I could cook a small turkey too, right. but it's just so easy to. The main thing for us is the dressing, and if we're going to have dressing, we're going to have something else that I know it must be. All right, on your well, essentials let's talk about list. the essentials. I, I yes. actually, I, I made a small change while we were talking. You reminded me of one that should be on the list. I've got six things beyond whatever your 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 protein centerpiece is All right and i know there are vegetarians in the world and they're doing like squash things and whatever that's more okay power too. to you i support you that's not what we're doing so i've got six things that i think are part of any even quasi-traditional thanksgiving meal beyond the centerpiece okay dressing we agree on dressing yeah, the most important part right. of the of the meal to my family yeah if we if if somebody and we rate them by years. You know how we, well, you know, right. we all like to rank. Yes. <laughs> we love ranking in this place. Sound Bites is all about the one, two, threes. Right. But it, we'll do that by years in um, in my house. Nobody has ever beat my grandmother's dressing. Although my aunt made a really good dressing too, but my grandmother's was the best. And I just do the best I can. I've become the dressing guy in my family. So even when we have it at my dad's house or my brother's house or whatever, I'm still in charge of the dressing even when we do that. And I would like to mix it up some, but they won't let me mix it up because the one year, 10 years ago or whatever, I found this recipe for a cornbread andouille dressing. And now they're just like, they're just like, no, we just want that every year. Sometimes I'll do some some toasted pecans in it to change it up. 
but I always do the cornbread on Dewey. You know what? I'm going to, I'm not the on Dewey, but I am going to put some sage sausage in it yeah. this year. My grandmother used I do to do both. it. A I do both. A little bit of sage sausage, a little bit on Dewey. Yeah. She didn't do it every year, but I've never done it because everybody says, ooh, we don't want sausage in our, I, I think they do want sausage in their, in their and dressing. I, I think use, that's what they like. About I use hers. the ground on Dewey, not like the smoked sausage oh, yeah, on Dewey. Because sure. yeah. I think texture wise, that's important. No, I agree with that. Yeah. Definitely. So, so, yeah. So, so that's what we do. Well, every year it's cornbread on Dewey dressing. So you, you mix it up year to year. Well, I know. I mean, I pretty much do. It's a, a recipe that you can find in Recipe Exchange. I did it uh, the first year that, I mean, I've made dressing before, but I've never really made good dressing until Linda Joplin, who is a a reader and uh, somebody whose dressing we have in Recipe Exchange. Um, yeah. Oh, and a video too. We have a video of her making it. That's right. Um, it's a, it's a, great and simple to make dressing and it's just it's the same kind of thing that i remember my grandmother doing it my grandmother's was darker than linda's though and i'm i'm thinking sausage i'm thinking it maybe have been it could have been a little bit of sausage but that's what i make i use linda's recipe and it's a good recipe and when i've tried to make it years ago um it was it was really just never good i felt like you could just kind of mix it together because it's just cooking who needs a recipe you do for for dressing if you're not adept unless you've made it a lot you need a recipe all right so next essential i have on the list is potatoes but i think and i'm not counting yams separate 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 conversation but I think it really has to be mashed potatoes, of right? Of course it does. Yes. It has to be mashed potatoes because, yes. in your Thanksgiving And meal. it's got to sit right next to your dressing, right. and you got to put the gravy over both. Well, that's the third thing, gravy, which oh. I'd forgotten about. Oh, God, no. Gravy is it. So my thing with the mashed potatoes on Thanksgiving, I'm fine with fancy mashed potatoes, but for Thanksgiving, I just want I want well-seasoned. You know, butter, mm. salt, pepper, butter, milk, whatever. But I don't want any cheeses or garlics or anything else oh, in no. there because no. I want the gravy to bring the flavor. That's right. Y- you are you are a hundred percent correct, and and you know I said somebody said something to me once. You do stuffing, I mean, or dressing. I think they said stuffing because I think it was somebody from the north. I know it was because now that I'm thinking of who said it, you do stuffing and potatoes. And I said yes, we do. Of course, dressing and potatoes. And somebody that we worked with at the Commercial Appeal said at, at my house we also make dumplings. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, carb it up. I'm all for it. It's Thanksgiving. Okay, so here's my question. Gravy on the potatoes, obviously. Mm-hmm. Do you put gravy on the dressing? Yes, I do. I do. I do not put gravy on the dressing. I do. What I do put a little bit on the dressing is my fourth essential, and you can argue whether you think this is essential or not. I think cranberry is essential. Oh, heck yeah. And I put it right next to the dressing because that's what I'm going to eat it with is right. the dressing. But the gravy is A little on bit of that of brightness it. from the cranberry, the uh, bitterness in the dressing, I think works really well. It's just You it, don't want to dump it all over it, but you just mix it up a little bit. And I have a one that I use every year that if I didn't make it, you know, everybody would be all right, I- so, insane. So you are fresh cranberry sauce. I'm fresh. Mine's more of a relish. I, we don't cook it. Although, oh, you don't? Okay. Uh-uh. It's, it's just fresh cranberries, uh, sugar, hot peppers, either jalapenos, serranos, whatever. And, um, and it's always been oranges, though for some reason... I think it was the year at Megan's house, we forgot to get oranges, so we had apples in the house, and I used apples, and that also worked well. Uh, it, it just it's, And then you just grind it all together, taste it, and make sure you have enough peppers. And that's, so you get this spicy, sweet, and hot. It's so good. So my wife makes the cranberry sauce, and so I'm not, a, I'm not an expert on how we do it, but I think it's pretty simple, but it is cooked. It's almost like, you know, when we make a chutney or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's fresh cranberry cooked, and then you let it... Um, Cook it down and then let it set, and it gets the, the right consistency. Um, but to me, that's essential. I don't want that. Get that can away from me. Oh, I know some people love the canned cranberry sauce, but not me. Yeah, it called my mother. Yeah, she yeah. would. She will. I mean, I, that's what I grew up with. I, yeah, In my I, family, people didn't make fresh cranberry sauce. My well, wife's, they did, and that, that is something we have brought from Minnesota. We are not doing the can. No, we. I there will be. Yeah, you can rest assured, somebody will bring a can of cranberry sauce to my house with, right. because, or I guess I could. Just kindly pick one up when I go right. to the grocery, but it, it and maybe even of course the kids aren't aren't going to eat it anyway. And I never ate cranberry sauce when I was a kid, by the way, because cranberry sauce was kind, it's gelatinous, it's jelly, and right. you know I never I, the, the texture of it bothered me. The fresh is not like that at all. So all right, the fifth essential on the Thanksgiving meal beyond your turkey or centerpiece, obviously there's going to be bread. 
we that's the one thing we tend to make everything from scratch. This is the exception for us. We do sister shoe patrols. We do too. Now my grandmother did the brown and serves, just those, you know, things that you pull oh, apart. That, if, and, I, when and, I, if I go to Arkansas for any, my mm-hmm. grandmother's for any holiday, that's what we're having is yeah. those brown and serve rolls. And, and the only reason that I even care about doing, I don't eat bread at Thanksgiving. That to right. me is just, it's, I've got my potatoes and I've got my dressing and I'm fine. But, um, you know, Jack is a picky eater who, by the way, has started eating apples. We now have apples to add to the list, that which is great. But uh, one of his favorite things are Sister Schubert, as he refers to them. He'll ask me, do you have any of those bread rolls? It's not just rolls. It's bread rolls. Now, do you do the so, individual Sister Schubert or the pull apart? No, we do. The, we do the ones in the tin. Yes, pull that's apart. what we do. Too. Yeah. The, and Park, that, and the that Parker is, House rolls are what they are. Yep. Young boys love some Sister Schubert they trolls because that is my, our son right. insists <laughs> yeah. on the Sister Schubert trolls. If he, if he eats nothing else, he's gotten to the point where, where he finally will eat other things. But for years, it would be like at least Ben will have the Sister Schubert well, that, trolls. Yeah, kind of right. that way with Jack. And yeah. he, Jack did ask me the other day, um, he, he said you know, something about, well, you remember that time when I had that bread roll and you had, um, um, I think it was called turkey with it. And I kind of liked turkey. Do you think you could cook a turkey? And I said, no, I can't, I can't cook you a turkey. This was like spur of the moment. Could you cook me a turkey for dinner? So, um, no. Our our Thanksgiving um, inclinations are very similar. Uh, Let's see if we can get, move apart here on the last, the last of what I call the six essentials. You obviously have to have some kind of dessert. Pie is traditional for Thanksgiving. We we don't do the same thing every year in the dessert. It'll change year to year, but typically we'll have a pie, and typically it will be a non fruit pie. It could be pecan, a chocolate pecan, a bourbon pecan. It could be a sweet potato. It could be some kind of chess or buttermilk. Non fruit pie is my Thanksgiving go to. We do all of those. That you just know. All, all, all <laughs> just at once? About, yes, I'm serious. <laughs> okay. We are serious about the pie. Somebody is going to do, a, somebody will bring a pumpkin or sweet potato pie. That's, you know, it's dead right. to me. I'm not going to touch anything like that. We have to have buttermilk pie. Sweet but, potato over pumpkin every day. Ugh. Eight Either days take, a week, sweet take, potato take, over pumpkin. Take whatever you want. Have it, uh, if one comes, I'll make sure the leftovers come to you. Pecan pie always. I, I just published, I think last week, a recipe that I'd forgotten. And it's really interesting that I had forgotten about this recipe that my late mother in law used to make. And you know how a lot of people will make a bourbon pecan pie? This was yep. a Kahlua pecan pie. And that was such a good pecan pie she made. So, um, so I'll probably make that this year. I'll probably do that. Uh, my aunt, who it, it, my late aunt, always made buttermilk pie and Love a buttermilk oh pie. Oh, my gosh. She made the best buttermilk pie. But what she got to the uh, where she would make, uh, she would not make them, but she would buy these little tarts, you know, like the little four-inch tarts, the tart shells, and she would make buttermilk pies and make pecan pies in those. So she would make, you know, like 60 of each. I mean, 60 all together and bring this huge thing. But if we can find the tart shells... We'll do the little ones. Somebody will, will do those. I have a cousin who'll do those. And then we also have, of all things, um, we have to have a um, these peanut butter cookies, which I don't eat peanut butter either. But everybody loves those peanut butter cookies, so we do those. Typically, someone will bring brownies. I don't make brownies. Typically, someone, typically we'll have brownies. Someone will make brownies. Some years, my wife will make an apple pie. I'm not making a fruit pie. I'm making one of the other kind of pies. What I sent my daughter via text a couple weeks ago, my daughters are good bakers, you know. Oh. What I sent her a couple weeks ago as a nudge. Did you say I, Russian, uh, Russian no, tea this, cake, no, honey cake? This, this probably, she probably won't come through for me here, but I, I texted her this as a nudge a few weeks ago. It popped up on the New York Times. It is a brown sugar layer cake with cranberry buttercream. Oh, my God. And I'm thinking she should make this for Thanksgiving. Why don't you think she'll come through? Rosie, come because, on. Because of don't the effort let us down. And the time that, go, that would have to go into it. But we, that's what I'm hoping for. But you do such a good job. Right. Um, well, I'm going to do an apple cake this year. Okay. And this this will, it, again, you find this on Recipe Exchange. And, and we'll we'll get some of these things out next week in the days leading up to Thanksgiving so that um, if you don't have, if you hadn't found them, they'll be made easy for you to find. But um, this is a cake that, our former colleague Cindy Wolf makes, and it 
is so good. And it's so simple. It's a bundt cake. So you basically just chop an apple, stirring everything together. But you just have to make it 24 hours ahead because you want to leave it at room temperature for 24 hours and let it get really moist. Um, it's got a glaze on it. I love a carrot cake for Thanksgiving, but my birthdays is so close to Thanksgiving that sometimes that doesn't, because I always have the carrot cake or have traditionally always had carrot cake at a family birthday, but I'm afraid that if I said this year I wanted a carrot cake, somebody would say, oh, that sounds great. Would you make it? And it's just too much trouble. So I don't think we'll do that. Well, we don't know. We don't know specifically what we're doing for dessert this year. We got to nail that down in the days ahead. But those are, those are my six essentials. Is there anything else? You didn't you didn't disagree with any of those. Oh, no, no. Is there if other things you would add to the – I have other things I'd put on the optional list. Well, is there anything else you think is essential to a Thanksgiving meal? It, Okay, yes, okay. yes. Okay, well, one thing, a big thing that to me makes it, well, first of all, there's some things on there that are going to be at, think they may not be here this year, but they would have been at our big meal. Right. There would be some kind of really disgusting congealed salad that would have marshmallows and some kind of creamy something in it that my grandmother used to make and that my mother loves. If she loves it, she can make it. That's how that's going to turn out. So there are a lot of things that I want. There will be, of course, the marshmallow top sweet potatoes, though I won't, again, touch those or make those. All right, let, 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 let's deal with those. So congealed salad, I'm saying no. You can have it, but no, it's, it's not on my, it's not it on my essentials list. Oh, no, no. I thought we said we were stepping off the not well, I was asking essentials. if there's anything else you would have put on the you, that you would put oh, on the essentials yes, list. Yes, on the essentials, I would have to. For my family, yeah. there's got to be mac and cheese. Okay. That they're, was just, on, they're totally that mac and cheese. That was on the optional list. I think I am going to do mac and cheese this year. We Green don't. bean casserole. Okay, well, oh. let's, talk, let's talk about those two. We don't yeah. do mac and cheese every year. I, I, I love mac and cheese, but I do feel like... With dressing and mashed potatoes mm. and mac and cheese. And dumplings. Yeah. <laughs> we don't do dumplings. So we don't do mac and cheese every year. Some years we do, some years we don't. I think I am going to do it this year. Um, It's got to be a baked out of the oven mac and cheese. Oh, yeah. I got to have the, the With the a bechamel. I, I right. never do that word until five years ago, but I always, that's what you do, right? It's, it's got to have some egg in there. Yeah. Um, it's going to have the crusty, cheesy top. Megan, who is not my daughter, Megan, who is not really a cook. That's the one thing that she can really do. She does pretty much my aunt's uh, mac and cheese. She can she can do it. And it's just, you know, the lots of the cracker crumbs and buttery top. You have to have that. It does have to be baked. You're right. I think I might go fancy, though. I might go with a purely white, like a Fontina-based mac and cheese, which I've done before. Mm-hmm. Not your most traditional Thanksgiving mac and cheese, but I think that's what I'm going to do. That sounds like that's something for my nighttime Thanksgiving. Right, right. it could be. That's more <laughs> yeah, your cocktail that's, Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's right. All right, so I have that on the optional list. I know many people would make it an essential. It's not an every year thing for us. Green beans, also not an every year thing. We'll probably have, typically we'll have something green. And if we give up, we'll just make a salad. But But more often, better is some green bean dish. I don't like green bean casserole. Now, my brother Micah did make one a couple years ago where he literally did everything from scratch. Like yeah, he made yeah, the mushroom. Right. He made everything from scratch, and it was by the standards of green bean casserole, it was good. But I didn't want that either. I do like it, and it's totally fine with me if it's just completely the way it's always been made, which is you know your standard Campbell's. Right cream bean, you know, the, the the soup, the whole thing. But I just like a little bit. And I mean, a very, of course, I mean, a plate only holds so much. And <laughs> right, right, you right, got right. a lot of stuff because there's still a couple of things. I love lima beans. I love corn souffle. I don't have to have either one of those things. But going back to the big full family Thanksgiving, we would have that. And some of this is because nobody would ever think to come to it without bringing something themselves. So right. there's just so much out there. But one thing I have to have, and I don't. I don't know what this is, but I have to have it. So does my mother. So does my daughter. You got to have coleslaw. It just fits in there somewhere. It's got a. It's got that nice. Just, that's such crunch. a summery thing to me. I don't it, think it, of that. I gotta a, have it. Gotta have it with a fall my fall winter. Gotta have it with my my deal. Well, the last and, thing we didn't talk about was jams. You said sweet potatoes with the with the um, marshmallow. I don't like that. Yeah, I like a basic candied yam, but we don't typically do that because not everyone in the family wants it. So I know for a lot of people that's probably an essential. That is not an every year thing for I us. I could not imagine Thanksgiving ever at my house without having that. I mean, I, I honestly can't think who with would. the marshmallow stuff. Oh on yeah, top? all Ugh. of it. Oh, it's terrible. It's the worst yeah. thing ever, and I don't even know who will eat it. That. 
Chloe has gotten so funny now. I mean, she goes around telling everybody she can't eat sweet potatoes because she's allergic. And I said, you're not allergic. You just don't like them. She said, well, I just tell people I'm allergic. And that's okay. That works for me. And, you know, not, none of us eat them except the, the people who do. They're going to want it. So so they will. But anyway, I think we're going to have plenty of food. It sounds yes. like you will, too. We're going to start cooking well, as soon as we stop recording. Well, uh, <laughs> almost. When we, uh, for next week, we can uh, tell a little bit about... Well, maybe not. We may have to wait. And we'll, we won't have Thanksgiving by the time we'll, when we record next week. But we'll catch up and, and yep. take pictures of, of what we do and talk about it a little bit because we'll be going into Christmas next. And then we can talk about Christmas meals, too. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>